Thank you for inviting me to this national seminar on newer vaccines. Chairperson Professor Imran Akadir and distinguished delegates. Challenges in the investigation of adverse events following immunization. I would like to do a quick quiz with you. I tell you that I am interested in spreading a lie, some falsehood. I will divide this audience into two groups. To those on my right, I am telling you that I am willing to pay rupees one for every time you tell this lie. To those on the left, I tell you that I am willing to pay rupees hundred for every time you lie for me. Who do you think would do a better job? No, it's not the people who are paid rupees a hundred. This is counterintuitive. Those who get a hundred rupees say, I know it was a lie, but the money was good, so what the heck. Those who get only one rupee tell the lie all the same, but they feel so bad for selling themselves so cheaply that their entire being recoils at the thought of it. To be able to live with this, they convince themselves that they thought what they were saying was the truth. Thus, because they have forced themselves to believe the lie, they make more convincing liars. This was first noticed in the Vietnam War. During the war, the Vietnamese took American prisoners of war and the Americans held Vietnamese prisoners. Prison conditions for the American prisoners were far more basic than those provided to the Vietnamese. Yet the Vietnamese prisoners never denounced their country. Every few days Americans could be seen on Vietnamese television denouncing America. The Americans thought that the Vietnamese had some very potent brainwashing technique till after the war and the prisoners were repatriated. So what is this brainwashing technique? The Vietnamese would give the Americans an essay to write. What is wrong with the American capitalistic system? The best essay would get the first prize. His essay would be read out. He would be awarded some trinket, a lapel pin, an extra bowl of gruel. The prize was so insignificant. The writer felt so bad about denouncing his country for so little that he would say he wrote the essay because he believed what he wrote was true. He would come on television and say so. This is cognitive dissonance. You know it is a lie, but you convince yourself that it is true. I want you to hold this in mind for the present. Adverse events after immunization. The investigations are the same as for a drug reaction or even for effects of environmental agents, say smoking and cancer, or a child who dies soon after being given injectable penicillin. The investigations are at two levels. To the left is the question, can smoking cause cancer? Does it do so in the community? You have to do a cohort study or a case control study and investigate those who are exposed and those who are not exposed. If there is a statistically significant increase among smokers, a p-value less than 0.05, then you say that smoking probably causes cancer in the community. When an individual who has smoked for one year has cancer, can you say whether the cancer was caused by smoking? Or 
when a child has developed a rash after being given a sulfonamide, can you say that the adverse event is caused by the drug and that it is not a coincidental event? For this, you should be looking at a probability scale. The probability scale for adverse events after immunization is called the Brighton scale. To be certain that the drug produced the reaction and it is not a coincidental event, one has to withdraw the drug and when he is well again, re-challenge him with the same drug. If the same reaction recurs, we can be certain. However, if death is the adverse event, one cannot revive the person and re-challenge him to see if he will die a second time. It is usually unethical to re-challenge. And all you can say is that the reaction was probably due to the drug. To be classified as probably related, there must be a temporal relationship with the use of the drug and there must not be any other plausible explanation for the event. If, on the other hand, there is a temporal relationship but there is also an alternate explanation, then it is classified as possibly related to the drug but also it is possible that it is due to the alternate explanation. If there is no temporal relationship and there are other explanations, it is classified as unlikely or unrelated to the drug. If no data is available with which to make this evaluation, it is put under the heading unclassifiable. I said that there was no difference in how reactions in individuals are evaluated, be it a drug or a vaccine. The difference is in society's tolerance to adverse events after vaccination. Vaccines are given to the entire population of healthy children, many of whom may never be exposed to the disease. Compared to this, curative medicines are given to a very small group of people who are ill to start with. Serious reactions in healthy children given vaccines is unacceptable to the public. In 2008, there were three deaths with pentavalent vaccine given in Sri Lanka. The WHO experts went in to investigate. They found clear temporal association with the use of the vaccine and there was no alternate explanation. Using the standard Brighton classification, this was probably related to vaccination. So what did the WHO report? They wrote in the report that they were deleting probable and possible from the Brighton classification they were using for this investigation. They were left with certainly related and in certainly related you have to re-challenge and the children were already dead and everything else was to be classified as unlikely or unrelated to vaccine. They wrote this up in the report and they concluded that the deaths were unlikely to be related to the vaccine. Only the summary, the conclusion, was published online. The experts declared the deaths were unlikely to be related to vaccine. The full report was however presented to the Delhi High Court in a vaccine case. And that is how we got to know the methodology they had used to arrive at this conclusion. Were the experts being dishonest by not publishing the full report? No, they believed that they were doing the right thing. Cognitive dissonance. The British Medical Journal published the story of this innovative methodology to the embarrassment of the WHO. What did they do in response to the BMJ article? 
they set up another committee called the CIOMS WHO committee to relook at AEFI classification. It was made up of 40 people of whom 19 were representatives of vaccine manufacturers with conflicts of interest. They developed a new algorithm for AEFI. They decreed that in future an adverse event following immunization will be considered an AEFI only if there was prior epidemiological evidence that that reaction can be caused by the vaccine. Ordinarily, vaccines are tested in a limited number in a randomized control trial called phase 3 trials. If there is no problem in this small group, the vaccine is licensed and given to the population at large in what is called the phase 4 trial. Rare reactions that happen say 1 in 10,000 are picked up in the phase 4 of the trial. If such reactions happen repeatedly, it forms a signal and then epidemiological studies and case control studies are done. Under the new scheme, such reactions noticed for the first time in phase 4 trials are all deleted as not an AEFI and they can never be seen as a signal. This is a schematic representation of the CIOMS WHO classification. On the right, I have highlighted what it would have been called in the old Brighton scheme and in red is the new terminology. The first question is, did the reaction occur after vaccine? If there is no temporal association, in the old scheme it was classified as unlikely to be related. In the new scheme, it was classified as not an AEFI. If there is a temporal association, the next question is whether the case has been investigated sufficiently. In the old scheme, if data is unavailable, it was unclassifiable. Here, it is not an AEFI. If there is a temporal relationship and there is sufficient details available, the next question is whether there is an alternate explanation for the event. If there is an alternate explanation, it is still called possibly related in the old scheme. In the new scheme, of, it is classified as inconsistent with causal association. If there is no alternate explanation, in the old scheme, this would have been classified as probably related to vaccine. But in the new classification, another question has to be asked. The next question is whether there is a known causal association in epidemiological studies. What is probably related to vaccine is then classified as not a case of AEFI if there is no prior epidemiological study. The next question is whether it fulfills the CIOMS case definitions for known reactions to vaccines. And if so, and only then, is it classified as consistent with causal association. You can see that what the CIOMS WHO did was exactly what the Sri Lankan team did. They have deleted possible and probable from the Brighton classification. In case you think I have made an unfair parody of the classification, this is the original algorithm. At the second level, I have highlighted it. Is there a known causal association with the vaccine? If the answer is yes, and only if the answer is yes, can it move to the left and be classified as consistent causal association? 
If the answer is no, you can go to step 3 and down again and then you are asked, is it classifiable? Meaning whether it fulfills the CIOMS case definition for an AEFI. If the answer was no at level 2, then obviously there will be no case definition developed by the CIOMS. You will be stopped going further down. So everything to the right is a waste of time and colored ink. If the answer at level 2 is no, there is no point in traveling down the algorithm. Thus, the CIOMS WHO have made the phase 4 trials redundant. Any new reaction will simply be deleted as not a case of AEFI and all memory of the signal will be erased. Remember, rotavirus intersusceptions were noticed in the phase 4 trials where 10 children among the 100,000 vaccinated developed intersusception. In the new scheme of things, those reactions would have been ignored. After the Sri Lankan deaths, there were 12 deaths in Vietnam with the same vaccine that was used in Sri Lanka. This was 2013. By then the CIOMS classification had been put in place and the Sri Lankan deaths in 2008 had been erased. The WHO report says no fatal reaction has ever been associated with this vaccine. Cognitive dissonance. The entire exercise is one of AEFI denial. The reason this exercise of changing the AEFI classification was undertaken was to deny the deaths following the use of pentavalent and hexavalent vaccines. The CIOMS have decreed that no cognizance can be taken of AEFI signals unless there have been prior epidemiological studies. As it happens, there is clear epidemiological evidence of deaths with the use of these vaccines and I will explain them in the next few slides. Even with this epidemiological evidence, AEFI denial continues in the case of pentavalent vaccine. This, I think, is cognitive dissonance on top of cognitive dissonance. The Periodic Safety Update Reports, the PSUR, are sent to the European Medical Agency. For some reason, these safety reports are considered confidential, suggesting to me that they are perhaps not safe. An Italian court has made public the PSUR reports 15 and 16 of the hexavalent vaccine Infrarix Hexa and it is available on the net. This is the PSUR 15. 60 million doses had been used. The manufacturers estimated that 9.4 percent or 5 million doses were used in children above the age of one year. The SIDS rate, sudden infant death rate in children under 1 is considered as 0.4 per thousand and it is 0 0.06 in children above the age of 1. From this they calculate the expected deaths for the doses used for each day after vaccination. You can see that on the day of vaccination 54 deaths were expected and double that in the first two days and so on. You will notice that the actual deaths observed were less than that which was expected. That is fine. But if you ignore the expected deaths, you will see that there are 42 deaths in the first four days after vaccination and only eight deaths in the next four days. This five-fold 
clustering of deaths soon after vaccination suggests to me that there may be a relationship between the deaths and the vaccine. But I won't quibble about that. See the table for the PSUR 16. The same pattern is seen except that in the second year there were more observed deaths on the second day after vaccination and also on the next day. There were five observed deaths instead of 3.96 expected on the day after vaccination. The PSUR 16 says that 20% of all doses were used in children over one year of age. In all the PSUR reports till up to that time, the manufacturers had estimated that 9.4% of all doses were used in children over one year. Suddenly, the rate was doubled to 20%. You can see why in this table. The observed deaths using the PSUR 15 rate were nearly double that which was expected. So, they doubled the expected deaths. Even after that, the observed deaths were more than expected on the second and third days after vaccination. The figure 20% is tenable only if every child who gets even one dose of the vaccine gets all four doses and one dose is after the age of one. Italy is the second largest user of this vaccine and they use only three doses per child, all of them in the first year. So it is impossible to arrive at the 20% figure. Were they being dishonest in jacking up the expected deaths? No, only cognitive dissonance. Here is another epidemiological study that links sudden deaths to the pentavalent vaccine. The token study was done with funding from the German government. This is table 41. It shows that the risk of sudden death in the period 0 to 3 days after pentavalent vaccine was 8 times higher than what is expected. A p-value of 0.006. So now we know we have epidemiological studies that associate sudden deaths with these vaccines. Even if we use the new CIOMS classification, these deaths must be considered as AEFI causatively related to vaccination. But AEFI denial continues. Cognitive dissonance. We spoke of three deaths in Sri Lanka and 12 in Vietnam. In India, there have been 237 deaths within 72 hours of receiving pentavalent vaccine reported to the government of India up to August 2016. When compared to deaths with DPT, the deaths have doubled. We are only comparing DPT deaths in states where pentavalent and DPT are being used concurrently. If we assume that the deaths following DPT are the natural rate of deaths, then the increase in deaths following pentavalent vaccine must be attributed to pentavalent vaccine. The government of India has this data but they continue vaccinating. Pediatricians all over the country are using the vaccine not for the meager profits that it brings. They believe they are helping the kids. Cognitive dissonance. AEFI is no more challenging than the investigation of any other drug reaction. The challenge is to obfuscate to make a case of AEFI into not a case of AEFI. 
the CIOMS WHO classification is a perversion of science and it militates against common sense. The rotavirus interceptions would never have been picked up had this classification been in place when they were first noticed. We need ideas and we need action. We have to work jointly to remove this perverse classification if we are to avoid unnecessary deaths. Thank you.